I'm Isander. I'm Coda. And to live is to suffer. And if there's anyone in 40k who is the living embodiment of that, it is none other than today's topic, the Lamenters. The Lamenters. They've consistently, since since we started this, all those months ago, uh, one of been one of the most requested chapters out there. I'm I, honestly, I've, I have seen more requests for them than some entire legions. They're very beloved. People seem to like the Banana Boys. And, and, yeah, no, they're right up there with the Space Sharks. And they are miserable. Even, even by 40k standards. They're, it's pretty... I mean, it's in the name. Yeah. One can only assume. You will be surprised. Ah. You will be surprised. Speaking of requested, you guys get to decide the next episode. You know the rules by now. You vote in the comments. The options are the Necrons, the Orcs, the Heroes of the Imperium, and the Harlequins. You get to choose. If your faction doesn't get chosen, you didn't speak loud enough. Unfortunately. It happened to the Night Lords. It happened to the Ultramarines. It could happen. No, it will happen to one of those four. So if you don't want it to happen, make your voices heard. I'll be honest. Good luck beating the orcs. Because every time I mention them, they are out there. I don't know if they're coordinating. I don't know how they're doing it. But there are a lot of people they all just, in lockstep. They just turn green and start screaming the silliest things. Oh, yeah. No. So make your voices heard if you want to beat the green tie. We also have a Patreon, which is the only way we continue to produce this. And it also gets you a bonus episode every week, as well as a bunch of other perks. So if you want to help support the show and get more of what you love, head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda. For those of you who are on YouTube who can't at the moment, that's fine. I get it we are on the humble crusade to 100k and when we do that a demonculaba episode appears we are on episode i I, I categorized them all recently on episode 59 so if you guys want to be really funny if we can make it before episode 68 that's the goal because i can't think of a better episode for that one It's terrible, but I mean, if, if, if the numbers line up, the numbers line up. That's all I'm going to say. Ick. <laughs> now, on to today's winner, who actually started their run pretty successfully, as far as all things go. When they were first created, they came from this batch of Marines that was an attempt to improve on the whole Space Marine formula. They've been, they've been doing it for, for a while now, and it's natural. To get curious and go, can we can we fix these problems we see here? Can and we there? do Space Marine Two? Yes, Space Marine was so good. I want the sequel. Ex- exactly, and these ones in specific descended from the Blood Angels with the goal of fixing the problem that plagues them: the Red Thirst and the Black Rage. Which it's just a, it they're born with the terminal disease. Effectively, it's it's almost ha- like having the predisposition for Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, where. Your mind will at some point be lost, and there's nothing you can do about that. They can try their best to, you know, prolong it, live healthy lives, all that jazz, but they they know they're going to be reduced to husks at the end of it. So they just try to do the best they can. It's really depressing. We covered it in last week's episode, but it's one of the reasons the Blood Angels are one of the most well-rounded chapters out there, because... It helps keep them grounded and sane. If they don't have hobbies, they're more likely to fall to this issue. If they're not well connected with each other, it's going to happen more likely. So in lieu of treatments, because you can't prevent it once you have the genetic predisposition, they just opt to delay the inevitable and have a good quality of life because even though they may be locked in a tower one day deranged and shouting Horace's name until their vocal cords rip apart in their art in their pastimes there's at least proof that they were once men just regular guys like me and you who experience life the same well not regular because they have two hearts three legs you know the whole nine but r- relatively regular human right? kind of and in the Lamenters, there was hope that this problem could be fixed at the source, because if you can if you can fix the faulty kind of blueprint they're copying off of, then it should happen. And in the beginning, it was. Things were great. In the Lamenters, there was hope that this would be cured, and it genuinely was. At the time, it looked like there was no way for them to succumb to the Black Rage or the Red Thirst, with the only con to that being that they seem to have this predisposition to sadness it, it, it's 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 less they're when they get sad it's really bad and more they're they're always passively kind of 
sad in there's, a way. There's always that needling at the back of their brain, just like, hey, here's the downside to this. Yeah, uh, but if the options are raging like a madman until you die, or, you know, occasionally just hitting a hard thousand-yard stare while you're hanging out with your friends, and then somebody asks you, are you okay? And you say, I'm definitely fine, and you move on. I think that's worth it. I think that's a very fair trade-off. <laughs> it's a phenomenal deal, which is fantastic because they were the only success story from this first time they tried to mess with it. Every other one went so terribly, the whole founding was chalked up as cursed. Uh-huh. The entire thing. And it would lead to them never messing with the Space Marine formula for another thousand years or so. It, it, they, they effectively just said, my bad. The Emperor clearly figured this out. We're not going to try this again. Yeah, let it lie. Mutations left, right, and center, weird quirks, lower survival rates. I mean, anything that could go wrong happened to them. Some of them were cool. Like, um, we've covered some of them before. Um, There's some salamanders that got, like, Baraka-style claws or Wolverine-style claws. This this, this is pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. There's um, another that got the Human Torch's ability to just self-immolate. That's well, self-immolate without the self-immolating part. Well, yeah, I mean, they're on fire, but it doesn't harm them, yeah. you know? The, which, is, that's pretty cool. But the problem is the Imperium as a whole is very superstitious. They don't like it when... They will take things as omens. So even though the Lamenters were fine, they came out no, no horns, no sharp teeth, no hardened bones, no catching fire suddenly. They just seemed normal, just a little sad. Everyone treated them like they were pariahs even though they they just seemed like regular marines no matter what they did they were always ostracized even though they were clearly loyal they were always there for the emperor they were always there for the imperium they were always there for its people and even other marines would slink away when they arrived an imperium representative walks up to them and says there is no sadness in the imperium of man oh no there's plenty it wasn't it wasn't the sadness that made people slink away from them they were just so sure that something was off about them that they, it, it, uh, they had bad vibes basically uh, other th- these are people with again two hearts three lungs they can spit acid and they thought the lamenters were weird uh, and wouldn't hang out with them and it's not like the lamenters can go hang out with people because they're in the same boat two hearts three lungs can spit acid you, there's no way we can relate they fail the vibe check either way <laughs> and this is only the beginning of their plight no other space marines have it like that they always have that sense of brotherhood with each other you know there's there's a mutual respect kind of thing. You know, they may not always get along. Sometimes they really don't get along. I'm looking at you, Chaos. But there's a mutual respect thing so long as you're on the same side. The Lamenters are unique and nobody respects them. Uh, nobody even wants to talk to them. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Things only got worse for the Lamenters and pretty much everyone who came from that cursed founding when they decided they had enough of being treated like pariahs, and they had a schism over their right to exist effectively within the Imperium. And a bunch of them got together in a full-blown rebellion. The Lamenters aren't stupid. They they could read the room and they saw, okay, those guys came from the same batch as we did. They're all rebelling. Let's leave before we get blamed for this. And so they, they, they willingly went out to do fringe work as far away from this as possible. That way they couldn't be blamed in any way. If, if, if they went wrong, if they won, if they lost, I had nothing to do with it. I, I was not involved. I had an alibi. I was doing something else. Yeah. And they just went out to the edges of space to fight enemies in long crusades, which is a space marine's jam. That's their bread and butter. They're really good at that. And this is where their record begins of winning pretty often and always saving civilian lives but in the process having some devastating casualties i'm it again space marines they they know they're better than your average person they will not die for your average person very few do the lamenters are one of those ones that that will die for those people and it looks like they're doing their level best and they really are you look at the record it's very impressive but they keep losing really hard. And 
it's always you'll read their record and they're going great. They save a bunch of people and then something goes wrong. Something bad happens. Like they, they're winning on a battlefield. They save a bunch of people and then an earthquake strikes and like a chasm opens up and eats like half of them. Ugh. It's that level of whoa. Whoa. How, why did that happen? It, it, and, and, and this causes rumors to start because I'll be honest. If one of my friends calls me and tells me they have a flat tire, I'm like, that is that is rough. Right? They get home, the dog died of a heart attack. Yo, that's a tough, that's a very, that's very, a very bad rough day. day. Then his wife leaves, the boiler explodes, and the house burns down. What minor god did you spite? Yeah, you spited a god. What did you do? I, I've, I've had bad days. I'm pretty sure you've had bad days too. I have never had mildly irritated god bad days. You know, I've, they've, they've been bad, but not that bad. What did you do to deserve this? And that's the predicament that our lamenters found themselves in. They were living lives like it's a country song. Anything that could go wrong did go wrong, and they had a roommate named Murphy who moved in. It was not a good time. And this reputation grew and grew and grew to the point that when they were sent to defend against one of the many Black Crusades, um, the, the other chapter that they were sent with to reinforce them, heard Oh, yeah, go help the Lamenters. And they said, no, thank no, you. No, 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 no. And, and this isn't like, oh, you know, you're, they're on the way and the Lamenters are like, you know, this isn't like them refusing to rendezvous. This is the Lamenters are on the ground. Go reinforce them. To which they said, I would rather disobey a direct order than go work with those weirdos. <laughs> Leaving the Lamenters to hold all by themselves without any hope of backup. That is unfortunate for them. And... It is at this point we have to mention their battle cry, which is, for those we cherish, we die in glory. They're never ones to leave anyone behind, so they, they know they're stuck here. They know they can't win this, but they also almost compulsively can't leave these people to just die here. So long as they can try, they're gonna try. And so they stayed viciously outnumbered with zero backup against... Not the full weight of the Black Legion, but quite a bit of weight. And this goes on for six full weeks. Nobody will help them. And they keep picking up the phone like, hey, the mentors need help. <laughs> Hang up. Over and over and over again. And they undergo losses that would make the Dodo population numbers look great. Brother, what was that phone call about? Mmm, just telemarketers again. That's how they... That, they were treated like spam. They were treated like that one friend you don't like to talk to. <laughs> and they only got a break when the Ultramarines and the White Scars showed up to bail them out, discovering not the full army that landed there, but rather a few hundred. <laughs> they, upon seeing this, both, both of the ones that arrived just pitied them and went, just... Just go. Go home. We go, got this. Go I'm rally. Sorry. Get it back together. You did your part. And the Lamenters, you know, they they did do it. They did save quite they, they saved quite a lot of lives there. So even though they lost a lot of brothers, it wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. So they, they packed up their wounded, they all piled into a ship, and they left to give everyone their proper burials and kind of deal with what has just happened. As they enter space, they are caught in a massive warp storm and lost. They vanish. They just can't catch a break, can they? And nobody bothers to look particularly hard. This is like if you took your cousin to the hospital and they're discharged, a black van appears, kidnaps them, and your response is checking under the couch cushions for 10 minutes and going, I guess they're gone. And that the entire Imperium just writes them off as lost in the warp. They're never to be found again. That is so unfortunate. Moving on. <laughs> Checking under the couch cushion. That's basically nobody looked really hard for them. Not even their fellow blood angels. Hilarious. They charged Awful. their whole existence Hilarious. to the game. The entire thing. Just said it was faded. Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen eventually. It was gonna happen eventually. But then, a hundred years later, the Lamenter ship arrives, tattered, barely functional, with even fewer survivors on board after actually fighting their way back from hell. And instead of the hero's welcome, they, they, they should have gotten for this. They, 
think about everything they've just been through, their response is, yay. Yay, the Lamenters are back. This is so great. Hi, guys. Just please go stand over there and patrol. Thank you very much. Don't touch anything on the way out and take that black cat with you. <laughs> it's... It's there. That's how bad the vibes are around these guys. From here, they, they they do go catch a little bit of a breather, but then they hear that the Ultramarines need help, and the Ultramarines are the only reason they're still alive, or at least one of the two only reasons they're still alive. So they feel this need to go help them to pay back that debt. Like, hey, you saved me. I'm sure you were looking for me all that time, guys. I'll be there for you. To which the Ultramarines go. Sure we were, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. And they help them liberate the orc planet of Slaughterhouse 3. Because if hell Michigan can exist, so can Slaughterhouse 3, I suppose. This is now going to become my official petition to rename a random town in Massachusetts murder. You can get an odd number of signatures for that. Murder, Massachusetts. Let's make it happen, guys. The orcs had set up an... Which is... This is never good, by the way. If you hear the orcs had set up any form of functional structure, it's always terrible. They shouldn't do that. But when they do, it's usually bad. And that is exactly what they've done on this planet, effectively creating a a industry world that's just there to strip mine it dry, effectively. And the... The only way they do that, because these are orcs, they don't have tunnel boring machines. They don't have equipment. They just make people do it till they die of exhaustion. And hearing about this plight, the Lamenters in specific asked, please, can we go help them? They're just stuck there. Nobody's coming for them because it is deep behind. It's deep in there. That's that's enemy lines right there. Yeah. To which the ultramarines who are the best at strategy planning and logistics look them in the eye and say that is an awful idea and even if you pull it off you're not getting help it's not going to work this is a, on no excel spreadsheet does this make any sense and that's all i think about at night so no i'm not getting involved but sure go off i guess and they still took the mission Despite that warning, this is kind of where the argument comes from, where sometimes it's not luck, but rather their judgment that gets them into situations. But we'll touch on the judgment argument later. What matters is they took the mission and they succeeded. They actually snuck in behind orc lines with basically no numbers and wiped them out. Being able to secure the mines and liberate the people... Upon which, when they did a head count, they realized there are three million of you. And we came with one ship. We can't cram you all in there unless we'd, like, juice you. With orcs on the way back. And remember what the Ultramarine said? I don't care if you win. I'm not coming. This isn't... A, uh, I'm not getting involved. I'm sorry. So they're alone behind enemy lines with enemies coming in and three million people to save. So immediately, they just have the one ship they have just ferrying people back and forth, back and forth, while whoever they have with any kind of technical skill is working to fix what whatever the orcs consider rocketry to get <laughs> off the planet. And to help stall for time, they dig in, vowing to fight to the end so long as there's even a slim chance they can evacuate everyone. And with their backs against the wall, they hold just... Sla- I'm talking slaughtering orcs. It's like I said, slaughtering orcs from Slaughterhouse Three. It's 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 really impressive. The numbers are putting up for how many orcs there are versus how few lamenters there are here. But at the end of the day, this is a, it's a tsunami of people, well, orcs, mushrooms. Yes, the, the, there's n- despite their best efforts, ev- with each passing day, more and more and more people die, no matter what. If it's not Lamenters, it's the people they're there to save. And watching this brutality and being actually unable to do anything about it, the Lamenters, for the first time, succumb to the Black Rage. Oh. <laughs> Meaning that they're now fighting the hardest any space marine could fight, envisioning themselves as Sanguinius himself, facing down Horus for that last fight. But they're now forced to inter more brothers than ever before, not just because of the heavy losses they continue to take with each passing day, but as more and more of them 
go insane with the black rage, you can't come back from that. It's either you die in battle, you're executed, or you're locked up and saved as a weapon to be used later, only to rage at enemies in direct lines with nothing else, really. It's kind of the antithesis of who they are. They fight because of who's behind them. Anyone afflicted with the black rage is solely focused on hatred for what's in front of them. Mm -hmm. And with that, the one thing they had going for them is taken. The rug is ripped out from under them, and... What was it all for? Yeah, what, the, what, why, why were we doing this? They're just sad all the time, and they don't even get the cure for it. They're just perpetually depressed over it. And they didn't even get a full chance to come back to full strength before joining this horrific endeavor. They went in with the numbers they had after being left alone and lost in the warp and nobody giving them any care in the world. No reinforcements, no help, no, like, somebody to talk to, maybe a shoulder to cry on. Nope. And they still felt the urge to help the Ultramarines and still showed up for these people. But at the end of the day, even they can see what's happening. And the loss has become so catastrophic that the very people they're trying to save start pleading for them to just go. There's, there's nothing you can do. They'd rather at least the Lamenters live on and maybe save more people while giving them the dignity to die as free men. And now these people that they've sacrificed for this entire time, that they've bled and died for, they have to leave to die to the incoming green tide. But they can't even do that. Because if they leave them there and the orcs get them, they're just going to start the operation all over again. So the lamenters have to lay out a complicated network of explosives and sunder the entire planet, leaving actually one of the largest imperial graveyards. They, they had to do that. The nice guys had to be the ones to create one of the biggest imperial burial grounds. Terrifying. <laughs> it, it's the equivalent of discovering, let's say hypothetically, that the Canadians, <laughs> stereotyped for being the kindest people on Earth, are the reason behind a lot of the Geneva Convention's principles. But that wouldn't be the case, right? That would be ridiculous. They wouldn't have been just unstoppable in the First World War, right? <laughs> Back to our lamenters. I have a feeling he's being facetious here. Canada, what have you done? <laughs> oh no, Canada and World War Canada and World War One was a different breed. <laughs> If I remember correctly... They didn't even say sorry. If I remember correctly, um, I, I believe the Germans poked out for a, a second, because, you know, the Christmas Day truces and all that, you know, like, hey, you know, ceasefire, all that jazz. They were immediately shot at by Canadians. Oh. I, immediately. They had a record for... If oh, it, it's, I just love the sentence that a lot of people consider death preferable to being captured. By the Canadians. I don't know what was in the water back then, but they were different. <laughs> they they had a lot of hatred in their hearts for Germany at that time. The brutal Canadians. It, That's it's an unthinkable sentence nowadays. I, I think I think that's why they're so kind nowadays. It's kind of like a, it's like a, it's it's a, it's a it's a self limiting kind of situation. It's it's like uh, the. It's the one really, 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 really nice D and D character who's suddenly a werewolf and starts terrifying the universe. Basically, it. I, I, that's my favorite. That's my favorite thing. But back to the lamenters, they return to the ultramarines with their heads held low, even lower numbers that they left with, and for once, people were happy to see them. They were met with proper celebration, and it's because, like I said, the ultramarines are geeks for spreadsheets and if you look at the spreadsheet of the imperium three million is not that many to lose it's especially if you consider that we had to pay three million lives to start a bunch of orc infighting cripple their one planet that they could strip mine everything from and set them back by years oh that's a black friday deal it's just like you did you did you did everything right. it, it's it's a cold it's a very cold calculus and this is why the ultramarines aren't there's no good guys in 40k this is why even they suck because they're really mac i mean all they care about spread they, they just care about mm -hmm. spreadsheets but in purely logical terms their mission was a success they said they they that is a massive victory in this campaign and to honor them 
they're hailed as heroes with the leader at the time giving them an iron halo. It's, it's that thing you see actually above, like pretty much every important character has an iron halo. Like th- that one bit of art of Gilliman sitting on the throne with that man. With the iron, iron, halo. iron halo. It's it's a whole thing. It is not only like receiving a medal of honor. It's like a medal of honor that can deflect bullets. <sighs> so imagine getting a purple heart and now you're bulletproof too. That's, you got hit once and never again. Yeah. Not even necessarily you got hit once. It's you, well, actually, no. I think that is the requirements of the Purple Heart. But in in this case with the Iron Halo, you don't have to lose catastrophically. You just have to win really hard. Gilliman still has all four of his limbs, and he has one. <laughs> That's just because he wins well, really hard. He did lose his life at one point, like mm. de facto lose his life at one point twice, I think. But yeah, to- twice. He he he, he just. I mean, my favorite scene from Gilman is him punching the meat out of another marine. Like, I mean, it just punching another chaos marine and then just water leaving the other end of it. That's the geek, by the way. That's the dork of the Imperium. Bones staying, meat going. It, it's it's very fun. He skeletoned him. But instead of just accepting this moment for what it is, they didn't. They couldn't receive this honor happily because in their minds. They didn't win. They couldn't be further from victory. They wanted to be honored as heroes and not as killers. To which everyone's immediate reaction in the room was, This is why we don't like you guys. I knew it. I knew it. You, you were just going to focus on. on the bad of this. What? Yeah. Why can't you think of anything as nice? Yeah, this act of public self-flagellation was not met with the nobility that it should have gotten, frankly, but instead proof that there is something going, there's some chicanery happening here. I don't know what it is, but nobody refuses the highest, one of the highest honors we can give, something that the emperor himself has in some of our depictions, and his sons certainly do. That, it's jarring that they would say no to that. Something's up. And, <laughs> and so this just confirms it. Clearly, their luck is their own fault. It's it, this isn't luck. This is the emperor himself giving them the evil eye. We want nothing to do with this. And they were shunned by the only chapter they were kind of close to. Back to being alone. Damn. <laughs> Leaving in shame, they went to go rebuild their strength and again pay back another debt they owe. This time to some friends. It's really simple shtick. You just escort. It's an escort mission. They were just going through an escort mission, and it was. During this escort mission that, again, the combat record starts to show. Every time Chaos shows up, they get pub stomped. They're, they're so good, they start boarding the ships and causing chaos and leaving. Um, but as they're doing this escort mission, a ship carrying quite a few of them undergoes a one in one million failure of their fast travel system. And it kills almost everyone on board and renders it a useless hulk. Uh. <laughs> at least this time at least this time they weren't written off as lost completely one in one million chance and dead they, they, they were found and um, they were recruited by the death watch I believe helping them continue their fight who um, they're the special forces of the marines they, they will just look for people who are particularly good from any chapter and go you're joining us now and it's, it's, it's a pretty high honor honestly um, and remember them in specific. They'll they'll become they'll become important later. But for the rest of them who didn't get caught in that freak accident, they paid off their debts and they found themselves deployed with a new batch of marines to patrol with. This, these ones didn't run from them, right? Pretty good. And to their amazement, beyond just you know actually staying there, not actively leaving, they didn't treat them like it was a leper colony. They were actually fairly kind to them and would share reinforcements, armor, weapons, and gear. That's a first. Right? And it even felt like, for the first time, they found brothers that were willing to die for them as easily as the Lamenters were willing to return the favor. So, the bond basically grew overnight. They became like this, and together they established this small corner of space that was strictly under their control. It was, it's not unheard of. I mean, the biggest example is... Ultramar. It's a whole thing. It, it could secede and it would be several problems. So it's not unheard of for Marines to do this kind of stuff, especially since they are good at their jobs. 
So having it under the strict command of a couple of Marines who just keep that area clean, it's, it's unheard of. Nobody cares. Uh, the problem is the Ultramarines pay all their taxes on time down to the penny owed with nothing more, nothing less. These guys don't do that. They they need a turbo tax. No, they weren't. No, they weren't just late on taxes. They doubled down and refused to pay them. Oh, and the 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 poor lenters were none the wiser. They they weren't told any of this. They were just like, oh my god, we we have so much so many resources from all these planets. We can just continue to improve, and we can finally get our numbers back up. This is great. Oh yay! Mm-hmm. And when the tax man comes to their door, they're quickly fed fed a twelve gauge and then just taken around back. And again, this happens a few times, and the lamenters are none the wiser to this schism that's growing. This problem that's just widening and widening. Eventually, the paper pushers notice that there's supposed to be this much coming from here. It's not. What's going on? Somebody's not paying their taxes. And the Imperium's gaze starts slowly turning on this corner with more force being applied. Instead of just apologizing, giving up, going, my bad. I just missed my returns. It happens to the best of us. Here you go. They tripled down and shouted, no taxation without representation seceding from the Imperium. Outright leaving. And they framed it to the Lamenters as those pencil-pushing dorks are infringing on our Emperor-given rights. This is our just sovereignty. Leave us alone. And the Lamenters bought it. It's like, okay, that sounds fair. I mean, it's not unheard of for the administration to start in... This happens all the time. I mean, different arms of the Imperium will grow and shrink, wax and wane in power. So if the dorks are the ones getting powerful, we'll certainly feel it. And (laughs) the Lamenters bought this hook, line, and sinker and stood by the only people who'd ever done the same for them. If the Imperium was only kind of looking at the area before and vaguely aware of a problem now they were staring directly at that corner of space <laughs> they're ready to sick the worst organization on them well because they've the s- space irs <laughs> mm, somehow worse somehow worse than the space irs you'll see oh because the imperium's they had a whole heresy over this they know how quickly this can get out of hand marines are if left to their own devices to rebel, they can easily split things in half. Even even the smallest thing can quickly escalate. So, they every time something like this even begins, they have the policy of just smash it with the biggest hammer we have. That way it's gone. That way we don't even stand a chance of a second heresy. And most wars in 40k are measured in the time scale of millennia. So, some wars have been going from when the Emperor died to Today, that well, died to today. It, wars happen it, it, in the grim darkness of the far future. There's only war. These there's things, a lot of war happening. There's, this isn't like our conflicts, which are resolved within you know decades or so. Most wars are just millennia. The fastest are hundreds of years. This was over an eight. As chapter after chapter was sent to bear down on all these people, and the lamenters are just getting more and more confused. Because, okay, sure, you said that they're, the, the pencil pushers are hurting us marines, but why do they keep sending every other marine our way? And they're still trying to figure out what's going on here. So instead of firing on their brothers because they thought this was an administration issue, they would only win their conflicts by outmaneuvering the enemy, sabotaging, making themselves seem larger than they actually are, or making threats where there are none. They're basically showing just how good they are at this warfare thing because they're winning entire engagements without really killing anybody. And they're just doing their they're doing their level best. What's happening here? I, I get it, the Ultramarines don't like me, but why are they here now? Why, why, why are... Why, mm-hmm. why are the Dark Angels here? That yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, actually... <laughs> But throughout the whole of this mini mini heresy, not a single drop was spilled by them, which and I mean, they still won. Impressive, right? Very impressive. They, they try so unimaginably hard all the time, and they're not even incompetent. They just keep getting shafted in every way possible. They have nothing basically, and they still fight to the bitter end. And it's not just 
the fight to win, but to win in the right way. And that's what really matters to them. It's why they didn't take the Iron Halo, because they they won, but they didn't win the right the way they're supposed to. And it's something no one else even tries in 40k. Are they gone? We're good. Move on. That congratulations. And to reward them for this act of this this act of virtue, this act of leading by example, the administrators send in the Minotaurs after them. The Minotaurs, a chapter of Marines known for being the most hateful, shady combatants that they have. Nobody, nobody, even Inquisitors don't know their history properly. You can't access it. It's uh, been redacted. Uh. Nobody even knows who their father is. We don't know where they come from. They do not fight well with others. And when they do fight, they fight like animals, ripping through anything and everything. Most Marines will arrive with enough soldiers for the job, you know? Or, in some cases, if they think they're that guy, less. And they'll still accomplish that. The Minotaurs only arrive with all the marines for the gig they only bring their full force down nothing less on anything they're sent after swing with your whole back yeah. if you're swinging with half your back you're just gonna hurt yourself and they are specialists in killing other space marines that is their job description and they're one of the few chapters that can do that they are loved by the upper management of the Imperium, and because of that, they have the best weapons and armor that the Imperium can make, but they themselves have no love for anyone. They're only fueled by hatred for what's in front of them, what they've been sent to take out. And I will make sure that this image is up on screen now, and I'll even link it in the show notes to show their chapter master, so you can see this is the person they sent after the Lamenters. I'm imagining just a space marine that's e built like a brick shit house, even by space marine standards. Yeah, pretty much. And the key thing is, in the beginning, they were sent only for the Lamenters. Oh. There were a bunch of others doing this whole heresy thing, but it was just the Lamenters they were sent after. A chapter that isn't even back to full strength yet. And the Minotaurs just watched them for a while, just waiting, and did not immediately landing on them but waiting and watching until they located their main ship and it was resupplying and getting medicine for the wounded marines on board the second i'm talking the exact frame they land to buy groceries a full chapter lands on them going first for their engine so they can't leave and then just beginning to fight them the minotaur studied their frame data for 17 days straight, they're just being beaten into the ground, boarding, ship-to-ship -ship combat, and the Lamenters can't leave here. Their, sh their ship is broken, and they have their wounded brothers on board. You can't leave them, so they have to sit there and fight. I mean, they do deal back quite a few casualties, but man, do they take up whatever they had regained at this time, they got knocked right back down. <laughs> it, it, was, it was, they were outnumbered, they were outgunned, and... At the end of it, they were a completely shattered force. Those who were still around had to surrender or go extinct. That was the choice they were faced with. Most of their ships were just floating rubble at this point, and with the Minotaurs <laughs> accomplishing their task, not only were they lauded as heroes, they got first dibs on all the Lamenters' gear they had been gifted. Ah... Uh. So they were stripped right back down to nothing. From there, those Lamentos who survived were locked up in a prison just in orbit. And they were left alone with nothing but that ever-present anguish that they feel to keep them company. That weight on their chest that makes it impossible to breathe. That pressure that makes it hard to swallow. And the real, almost physical pain that comes with dark thoughts that you might not be able to figure this out. It, the, the mountain's just too tall. And that's what the Lamenters are left alone to think about. With the Lamenters out of the picture, the rest of the war goes... It doesn't matter for the pur purposes of today's episode. It's pretty quick. They're, they're all beaten into the ground. And after the war, they stood trial and realized just how much they'd been had. They'd been conned into standing against the light, and they were gonna... F execution was what was coming next. No matter how misguided, the Imperium doesn't care. Treason's still treason. However, due to the almost comical lengths they went through at times to avoid spilling uh, other marines blood and paired with their 
just pitiful demeanor after the everything they'd been through. They were spared. And I'm putting some heavy quotation marks around that because instead of immediate death, which would have been swift, they were sentenced to a penitent crusade. Ah. Uh-huh. Which is the Imperium saying, your fate's in the Emperor's hands. I have no say in this anymore. You get no new gear. You get no new ships. You get no new recruits. For the next hundred years, you go up there and you hold out the deal you made with the Master of Mankind. Only in death will your duty end. To have just a suicide mission. The only way you're making it back is if he decides it. Nobody else. Yeah. We have no say in this. And they leave broken, battered, and bruised to start their long, penitent crusade, meeting their first foes in combat, scraping together what they have, an entire Tyranid fleet. Full force. So they're not winning this. Head on. They're not winning this. And as it's descending on world after world, consuming everything in its path, the Lamenters are not ones to turn and run and leave those people to die so they they leave trying to save as many people as they can fighting this literally incalculable hive mind and it's at that point that the wider imperium just loses contact with them that's it that, 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 that's the end of the lamenters it's assumed assume. that the last living arm of the lamenters are those that joined the death watch and of them some truly believe that they're the last. I, I have no brothers left. It's It leads to one of the biggest problems I had with this episode, which is there are not many hard Lamenters books. There's the, they get mentioned a lot, and you have to skip and put together a bunch of stuff. But unfortunately, they should, but somehow they don't have their own series. So... It's really rare we get to see things through, you know, we, we don't get to walk a mile in their moccasins very often, but we do get that in these guys who are with the Death Watch, specifically in those Death Watch books. And there's one who had barely survived, and what was left of him was scraped into a mech suit to continue fighting, because only in death does duty end. You still have a spinal cord and a pulse, so that counts. <laughs> and he laments his predicament being racked with this survivor's guilt over being the last living member of his chapter he's alone with a servitor and he just wants because it's really easy to cope when you're always fighting because you don't really have to think about it you just need to think about you know continuing to live but in this moment because those mech suits are really large he is stuck the rest of his brothers went on to fight He's stuck being a glor- effectively a guard dog. And it's in that moment that he can really think. And that pain really sets in. I mean, pride can only go so far. And in that moment, he's not sure of himself anymore. He, there's this really sad moment where he, he curses himself for, for having these dark thoughts. And then it doubles down with him thinking... This, I may be the only person who even knows that word anymore. Because all my brothers came from this planet that I remember, and they're all gone. It's just me. In the entirety of the galaxy, in all the planets that the Imperium owns, I'm the only one who still wears this symbol on my armor. That's it. All, everything we fought for, everything we died for, everyone we saved, they're all long dead. All that suffering for us to just go down as another failed chapter in history. <laughs> and he looks at the servitor, this excuse of a human, because they're, for, for those of you that don't know, servitors are criminals usually, look, criminals in the Imperium, you can frown at somebody and be declared a criminal. A criminal. <laughs> who have been lobotomized and turned into basically cheap TI 82 computers. And in that moment, he looks at that thing and he feels like there's no difference between the two of them. They're just whatever's left of a human being forced to serve until there's nothing left. And it, it 
it, 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 it gets grim. It, it, it's, it's real. It's very dark. And instead of succumbing to those feelings he has in that moment, instead of taking it out on the servitor like he wants to, instead of, frankly, just ending it all like he's considering it, he steals because he knows who the Lamenters are. And he knows there's at least one other person who's wearing that symbol out there. And he will fight to earn the right to see them again. Because that's all he can do at this point. Because if he ends it, then he's officially done it. There are no more Lamenters. And if he takes it out on the Servitor, then he's he's he's, he's effectively not a Lamenter because they don't do that. So it, it does a good job of showing... A, why we need more books on the Lamenters, even though there would be heart-wrenching stuff. But B, why people like Lamenters. Because, sure, there are people with luck that bad out there. And if you can relate that way, first of all, I'm sorry. Second of all, you will figure it out. It's not going to last that long. You can only temper steel through heat. But for most people who do not have cousins named Murphy living with them, the joy in the Lamenters is the fact that they persist despite being genuinely really depressed and having good reason to just quit if ever if, if there is any chapter out there that can just say we're done we, we, i don't want to do this anymore it's the lamenters but no matter what is thrown out their way no matter how much it feels like the whole universe is actively conspiring against them they just keep going doing what they can within their limited reach to keep who they are alive so they don't, they don't bury their sorrow like some of the other Marines do. They don't, they're not cold, unfeel. They feel, they they feel really hard. It's one of my favorite things in a lot of depictions for lamenters in the fan base. It's them, just dealing with this feeling of being cursed, truly just unlovable. I don't know what I did to deserve this. All I've ever done is try and work. Uh, you know, it's it's the all I've ever tr- tried to do is serve you, Emperor. I. I don't know why this keeps happening. I don't know why I'm alone. I don't know why I'm unloved. They they can't control it. It's not their fault, but they're still there. And they use that sorrow to strengthen their resolve. They l- quite literally wear their hearts on their sleeve. The symbol is a bloody heart with a tear in it. Yeah, if, you, if you couldn't tell. So are they unlucky? Charringly so. It's ridiculous how unlucky they are. But from where they're standing, and this is why they're super super touching to me they're unimaginably lucky because nothing that's happened so far has broken them it's suffering on a level that could have befallen anyone but not many would have been able to take it without giving an inch or so much as complaining so they suffer because honestly they may be the only ones with the strength to i mean i'll be honest the ultramarines live really cushy lives five minutes is a lamenter There's some bridges they're jumping off of. It's just a fact. But it, there's there's a real beauty to that, and I think it can only really be captured by the Sons of Sanguinius, these people who are just damned from the beginning. And I think it's also what sets them apart from the Salamanders, because the Salamanders are almost naturally inclined to being good. They, they come from this planet where it's so harsh, you have to be good to each other. You have to be collectivist. You have to be there for each other, or else you're just not going to make it. The Sons of Sanguinius, at their heart, they're kind of raging monsters. And the way they cope is by just trying their very best to do the best they can, no matter what they're dealt. And so even though they both do the same thing at the end of the day of saving um, as many Imperial citizens as possible, the why is what makes it so interesting. And that's why I really hope they get more books. I really hope they get more books and more things fleshed out. Um, like for, like it was, this one was genuinely hard to read on, I'll be honest. Because like for example, there's, there's so many conflicting accounts here and there. And like for example, um, for some of them, they said that they got the Black Rage, like, like when I mentioned it, when they were fighting and they were abandoned in the very beginning. Others say it happened when they were fighting the High Fleet, right? Uh, some accounts were saying that they got reinforcements of the new, like, you know, the Space Marine 2 program. Some were saying they didn't. Like, Gilman just said, no, never mind, don't give that to them. Some said they couldn't come to help. Because if you didn't know, all the Blood Angels were being stepped on by the Tyranids. So they, they kind of all united full force to try and defend their home. 
Um, some said they, they didn't make it because they didn't want to. Others are saying they didn't make it because nobody wanted them there. <laughs> nobody bothered to call them. And so it's, it's one of those things where 40K is notorious for its unreliable narration. That's just the nature of it. Honestly, it's from what the writers in the Black Library have said. They're kind of like the ball that everybody's tossing around because nobody wants to keep. I know. They're playing hot potato with the Lamenters. I, I know. Nobody even wants to and give them... And it shows in the writing. Nobody even wants to give them their own series. It, I, and actually, you know, the worst thing about it is even though you love the Lamenters, almost nobody plays them because they're really hard to paint. Because they have that, they have like this checkerboard pattern with this intricate heart with a tear in it, and good luck painting that. Good luck. But I, I'm sure we have some very impressive people in our Discord. I know I'm going to see one painted beautifully, and if I do, I will certainly put it in the next episode. However, me personally, I couldn't. I, I, I just couldn't. And so it contributes to them just never getting any spotlight. It's They're truly, it, on every level, they're screwed. In fiction, outside of fiction, that, that's just how it is. But... Um, however you want to see them is, you know, ultimately up to you. If you think that the other Blood Angels didn't bother to call them because they're just that much of a bad omen, that's perfectly fair. If you think Gilman didn't want to send them new Marines because you do not want to double down on whatever bad juju they have going on there, that's perfectly fair. Um, but I just hope we see more of them. And I, I don't know if I want them to be happy. I think they deserve it, though. If anyone, if anyone in the Imperium does deserve it, it's them. They do deserve it's it. I, I would say they deserve mm-hmm. it. Yep. Thank you, guys, as always, for tuning into this episode, and we will see you next week for the winner of the polls, provided the orcs don't sweep, which is very possible. <laughs>